All right, hello and welcome to Time Force's mercifully silent title screen. Quite a change from the bombastic intro and the main theme music playing over the press start button. But I had to cut those out because otherwise I would get a copyright strike. So we're going to click New Game and after we choose our Ranger it'll boot us straight into the first level. Which is fine by me, no need to mess around. The Rangers, as you can see, ostensibly have differences in stats, but I've never been able to tell while actually playing. There's no time to waste! Rangers, the time villains have traveled back here to the 21st century. You must defeat and capture them before they damage the timeline. Make your way up the cliffs to the town of Silver Hills. Frax's cyclobots are causing havoc there. Apprehend all of the criminals you encounter. Should you accomplish your mission in a given time, you will receive a powerful bonus. Keep your eyes open for an artifact, too. So that owl robot talks a lot. These bonuses will stop the countdown briefly. Watch out, Ranger! There are boulders falling down those cliffs! If you're not careful, you'll be squashed! Extra life! Awesome! And I mean it talks a whole lot pretty much any time you do anything. Well done! You'll find super time bonuses like this on each level. So the robot tutorial guide says that uh, collecting those clocks stops the timer briefly, but it actually adds time to the timer. It doesn't stop it. And the super time bonuses, as he put it, the bigger clocks add more time to the timer. That's all they do. They're not super special or anything. They just add more time. These boulders are incredibly pedestrian obstacles, and we can take them with ease. Your life force will be restored when you pick up these bonuses. Collect them when your life force energy needs boosting. Yeah, god forbid you trust a small child to figure out that picking up the giant heart heals them. Great! Now you'll be invulnerable to attacks for a limited time. Take out those bad guys! We picked up the mandatory invincibility power-up just in time to fight the mid-boss, Brutius. This game does have a lot of mid-bosses, and we're going to fight them all pretty much the same way. We'll spam them with our special attack, which we don't have yet, and when we don't have that, we'll kick them. That's actually the strategy for almost every enemy in the game. Excellent! These power-ups allow you to move much faster for a limited time. Be careful how you use them. Yeah, god forbid you trust a small child to figure out picking up the winged boots makes them move faster. So there are a couple secret areas, well a couple's an understatement, there are many secret areas in Time Force, such as this one down here, which contain extra lives and extra clock bonuses and extra health and junk. We're only interested in the extra lives though. This game isn't very hard, and if you memorize the stages, which should only take one run, then the clock definitely won't be running out. That's also assuming you've learned to run past the enemies instead of confront them, unless they're mandatory, which they generally are not. Having played through this game at least three times, the only enemies I can recall being mandatory are the mid-bosses and actual bosses. Speaking of actual bosses, we're about to confront run, uh, one right now. This is Barbatron, and uh, we're gonna fight him the same way we fought the mid-boss, just run away and then run back and kick him in the face. In order to do a running kick, we do have to have some momentum first, but not a lot of momentum. The running kick is very easy to activate, and it knocks the enemy over and deals a decent chunk of damage. So it's the only melee move we really need to use throughout the entire game. And if this combat looks really stupid, unsatisfying, and poorly designed, well, try to imagine an entire game based around this combat and you have light speed rescue on the PS1. Just be thankful the running kick is more overpowered in this one. Fast work, Ranger! This life force bonus has extended your life force bar. You now stand a better chance of overcoming your enemy. Look out, Ranger! The time villain is mutated! So the game automatically chooses which Zord we'll be using based on which boss we're facing, and each Zord has a couple of special attacks mapped to the L1 and R1 buttons. 
Both of the blue Megazord's attacks are straight projectiles, which isn't great. Oftentimes the straight projectiles will pass straight through the enemies without hurting them, which is very frustrating. Luckily the later Megazords have much better special attacks that are almost guaranteed to hit. But not the blue Megazord. Anyway, when we're out of special move power, we're just gonna smash circle to kick it. That's all we do, really, for all of these bosses. This move is the Ground Thump Special. It can be used against your opponents to send a powerful tremor through the ground. It will also affect loose objects. To use the Ground Thump Special, press the R1 button. Whenever you see a cracked object, you can use your Ground Thump to break it. Well done! You can see the tremor that is sent out. Any opponent in this area will be affected. There are two types of recharge pads. One has an infinite amount of power, the other can run out. Try this one out. That's right! This one is an infinite charger. You can keep using this one to restore your power. There are two types of recharge pads. One has an infinite amount of power, the other can run out. Try this one out. Great! This one is a red charger which can run out. Around the time zones, you may find switches or levers. These will open doors and activate objects. Levers have many functions. Try activating the lever near the clock by standing next to it and pressing the X button or circle button. Well done, Ranger! Keep your eyes open for levers as you explore the past. And with that out of the way, we're kicked out to the hub. Normally I would end the video here, but I have some things left over to talk about, so we're gonna go play the first level again while I explain those. As you can see, we can see the title of the level we're about to play next before we actually enter it. It's kind of a cute touch, I guess. But anyway, as we replay the first level, I need to discuss some things about this Let's Play and the way it's gonna go down. Firstly, we're going to be switching up the Rangers each level because each level has its own unique loading screen before it starts, and each loading screen has its own unique Ranger. That's why we chose the Green Ranger for the first level, because the loading screen for the first level features the Green Ranger. So we're gonna keep doing that for each level. And secondly, unless the dialogue is important to the story, or is the after-mission training dialogue, we're going to be skipping all of that robot's dialogue from now on, because it just talks way too much. It gives overly verbose explanations of everything, and sometimes it has a voice filter, and sometimes it doesn't for some reason, and sometimes its information isn't even entirely accurate. Thirdly, I'm sure you noticed the big timer at the top of the screen there, and how the clocks add time to the timer. That's already been discussed, but... We don't actually have to beat the level before time runs out. Beating the level before time runs out just gives us a health boost. And we need those health boosts. The game's difficulty scales in accordance with the idea that you would be getting every health boost. So we are going to be beating every level in time. But that's not really saying anything because it's very easy to beat all the levels in time. They're very easy to memorize. Fourthly, uh, even though we get new special attacks after every level, most of them are useless and we're only going to be using the Ground Thump for battling enemies. All of the other special attacks deal more damage than our basic melee moves, but the Ground Thump is just the best of them, so there's no reason to use anything else. Fifthly, it may not be noticeable yet, but the basis for this game's design is platforming and pathfinding. We have to find out where to go next, how to get there the quickest, and then platform there. The platforming in this game is not great, I'm not sure if that's getting across in the footage properly, but it's very angular and it's very easy to slip up and miss. They presumably knew this because you can't actually fall off ledges by pressing forward to go off the ledge. It actively stops you. 
You can only leave a ledge when you press jump, but even then the jumping is incredibly awkward and it's easy to fall down a pit. So in spite of their best efforts, the jumping is still awful. In order to mitigate this, we're going to grind for lives on the first level, off screen of course, so the next time you see me playing this game I'll have 30 lives. It's very possible to beat this game without grinding for lives, it's not a difficult game, but grinding for lives allows me to be a lot more reckless and it shows off how broken the game mechanics are. So those are two bonuses already right there. And uh, sixthly and lastly, this boss has a special attack where he claps his fists together and shoots a laser. It's his only really damaging attack, but he rarely uses it. I figure they would have programmed him to use it a lot more, because I doubt most people will even see it. Anyway, that's it for this video. Next time we'll move on to the next level with a different ranger.